Hello, my Bio 160 class. I am coming to you from my house. I want to thank you for your flexibility and your patience with this ever-changing situation and COVID-19. I appreciate your grace and willingness to change to an online format. Um, we are moving on. I will be posting videos that I will then upload to Canvas so you can view them at your convenience. In addition, I am going to try and have some online Zoom meetings or WebEx meetings so that we can answer questions and maybe have more of a Socratic style discussion. All right, that being said, let's get to it. We are looking at the endocrine system next. We have a lot of ground to cover as we need to finish the semester as strongly as possible with the limited time that we have left. So in the endocrine system, the endocrine system is the secondary or the second version of control for the body. We have our first one, which is the nervous system, which consists of our brain, our spinal cord, and our peripheral nerves. Your endocrine system is your chemical control of the body. It uses chemical or hormones that release into the blood and then bind to specific receptors on specific organs depending on what the body needs to have done. They control major processes such as reproduction, growth and development, body defenses, homeostasis, and metabolism. So hormones are produced in actuality by specialized cells being in the endocrine system. Cells secrete these hormones into the extracellular fluids, which then transfuses into the blood. They travel through the body and react with receptors at target sites. They regulate specifically the activity of other cells. If you were to not grow as quickly as your parents wanted you to or thought you should, you would have gone to see an endocrinologist as an endocrinologist studies specifically the hormones and the endocrine organs. Let's look at the chemistry. Hormones are classified into three groups, your amino acid bases, your proteins, peptides, and amines, your steroids, which is what we think of when somebody is shooting steroids. They are cholesterol-based chemicals, um, usually found in gonads or the adrenal cortex. And then you have your prostaglandins. Your prostaglandins are from lipids, and they are your local hormones. They have a smaller um, impact area. Hormones only affect certain tissues or organs. Even though they are released through the body as a whole, it's like a key and a lock. Target cells have to have a specific protein receptor in order for that hormone to bind to it and alter that target organ's activity. So the hormone is the key to the lock and the receptor cells on the target organs are the lock. They come together to open up and change the activity of the cell. If we look at the Greek or the, the term hormone, it comes from the Greek word meaning to arouse. That's exactly what it does. Hormones arouse or alter our cellular activity. This typically happens in one or all of the following ways. You can have changes in the cellular membrane permeability like we see in the um, membrane potential of neurons. It can create proteins or create some enzymes as needed. You've got inactivation or activation of enzymes. You've got mitosis. You can stimulate cell division or stop it. Or you've got um, hormones that will increase secretory activity. And we will look at that, for example, in bones, looking at calcitonin, increasing the, um, the bone building activities. There's two mechanisms by which hormones work, by which they will um, become active or seek to create activity within a target cell. You've got your direct gene activation, 
and then you've got your second messenger system. Let's skip over. Your direct gene activation. These steroid hormones, which are lipid soluble, will diffuse through the cellular membrane into the cytoplasm, travel through the cytoplasm into the nucleus. So not only is it lipid permeable through the cellular membrane, but also the nuclear envelope. Once it's in the nucleus, it binds with DNA, and then that DNA will create messenger RNA that will make the change in the cell that is needed, usually in the synthesis of a new protein. The second way is the second messenger system or the non-steroid hormone action. These are steroids that cannot pass through the cellular membrane. So what happens is they will bind to a receptor on the cellular membrane and then that receptor will set off a series of reactions that will activate an enzyme within the cell. That enzyme then in turn produces a second messenger within the cytoplasm of that target cell that will then affect the function of that cell. So the receptor or the hormone doesn't actually go into the cell, but it affects the outside of the cell to change what's happening on the inside of the cell to get the effect that it needs. Hormone levels within the blood are maintained mostly by negative feedback. Negative feedback is pulling in from chapter one when we looked at um, metabolism and control of the body for um, hormone levels. This is, this is where it's at. So do you remember we talked about calcitonin? And I'm looking for that image. Here we go. So in looking at the buildup or breakdown of, of bone, which we, looked, which we studied in Chapter 5, you've got the thyroid gland, which will release calcitonin. The thyroid is an endocrine gland. Calcitonin is a hormone. It stimulates calcium to be deposited into the bone. So what that'll do is, if you remember, it will decrease blood calcium levels, which will then affect the parathyroid hormones to initiate osteoclast works to degrade bone to increase the calcium levels. And that's the negative feedback is as you build bone, calcium levels drop, it's picked up by the parathyroids, which sends out a hormone to initiate the osteoclasts to begin working, which will then in turn shut off the calcitonin. There is your negative feedback. That is how most endocrine glands control and maintain the appropriate level of hormones within the blood. There we go. Okay, so your stimuli that activates fall into three major categories. You've got your hormonal, your humoral, and your neural. Looking at hormonal stimuli, it is your endocrine glands are activated by other hormones. For example, your anterior pituitary hormones travel to target glands, such as the thyroid gland that prompt the release of a hormone, such as thyroid hormone. Let's look at that. So you've got the hypothalamus secretes a hormone that stimulates the anterior pituitary to increase its hormones. It's one hormone stimulates another gland that in that releases another hormone that stimulates another gland to secrete their hormones. A hormone stimulates a hormone stimulates a hormone. That's your hormonal stimulus. You've got your humoral stimulus, and that's the changing blood levels. That's where your calcitonin feedback is happening. So you've got changing blood levels of certain ions or nutrients will stimulate the hormone release. Humoral, looking at the humors of the body in historical medical treatment, are the various body fluids such as blood and bile. 
Your example is the one I just gave earlier with your parathyroid hormone and your calcitonin being released in response to changing blood calcium levels. Insulin is another example of this. Here's your picture. You've got your capillary blood. Calcium concentration stimulates the parathyroid to decrease the calcium concentration within the blood. Your third one is your neural stimulus. Your nerve impulse is stimulating the hormone release. This is where norepinephrine and epinephrine come into play. This is what's happening in your adrenals with your stress hormones. Most of these are under your sympathetic nervous system. Your sympathetic nervous system being the nervous system that you have no control over. And there is your picture, central spinal cord, preganglia. All right, these are your major endocrine organs. These are your major players, your pineal gland, your hypothalamus, pituitary thyroid, parathyroid, thymus, pancreas, adrenals, and your gonads. From top to bottom, this is where they are, your pineal pineal gland, hypothalamus, and pituitary glands are all located in your brain. Your thyroid and parathyroids and your thymus are throat and chest. Adrenals live right above the kidney and your pancreas is a digestive organ as well as an endocrine organ. And then obviously your reproductive organs. Some Glands are purely endocrine. Those are your anterior pituitary, your thyroid, your adrenals, and parathyroids. Your endocrine glands are ductless glands. The hormones are released directly into the blood or the lymph. They don't pass go. They do not collect $200. It goes right into the blood. It's immediate. It's not necessarily an immediate effect, but the release is immediate into the blood. All other of your glands are mixed glands, which means they have both endocrine and exocrine, exocrine functions, meaning your pancreas and your gonads. Let's look at the pituitary gland and the hypothalamus. They kind of have a symbiotic relationship. I'd like to think of them as a ship's captain sitting in a bridge of the ship controlling everything on that ship. And your hypothalamus is kind of like your first mate. 